Welcome back to a very important show, Trump Week. And, uh, you know, our title today is uh, Bob Mueller's uh, Day Off, as he's, he's off. It's a, it's a triple entendre. We'll talk about that in a minute. That's Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair, for our every week Trump Good morning, Week. Good morning, Jay. Yeah. Good morning, Jay. Good morning. I wanted to read you guys um, an email I got regarding a posting my brother Gene made on his Facebook. And it's a very interesting posting. I'll try to read it quick. How best to understand the pathology of the Trump administration is a question that has increasingly been on my mind. I have concluded that there is, in fact, no administration at all. Instead, what our country is witnessing is the executive branch equivalent of a sole proprietorship. In essence, a business that is owned by a single individual. In such a business, if the owner wants to work from home, it's okay. Mar-a-Lago. Deal-making, a.k.a. diplomacy, is done personally. North Korea. Secrecy trumps transparency by a country mile. Federal tax returns, war in the news media, unheard of non-disclosure agreements, refusal to uh, open the, the Mueller report for public view. Uh, nepotism. Nepotism is fine. Putting your unqualified uh, son-in-law and daughter in positions of responsibility. New hires for important positions are not vetted, but selected based on the owner's personal instinct and for reasons other than qualifications um, or merit. The entire cabinet, okay, making Newt Gingrich's wife ambassador to the Vatican. Numerous other senior positions, such as an unqualified proposed nominee to the Federal Reserve Board, who underpaid his federal income tax by $75,000. Hmm. Mm. Advice is welcome from country club friends who have no fiduciary responsibility to the business. Ah, the Mar Mar-a-Lago experts on the VA. Right? Delegation of responsibility is a low priority. That is, overturning decisions of subordinates, such as the secretaries of defense, the treasury, and education. Legal advice is purely operational. That is, revolving door of Trump attorneys, reliance on over-the-hill Mayor Giuliani. And government itself is viewed as the enemy. Deep state. Attacks on the FBI, the intelligence community, expertise in general. What have I omitted? Really? Can you think of other ways in which this administration is like a sole proprietorship? Or, or does a different analogy work better? I really enjoyed that. Wow. Very nice. That was yeah, very nice. Excellent. Very nice. Thank you, Gene. I can haven't met your brother, one. but I'd like to. That yeah. was very well, well yeah, stated. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's true. It's right on. It's n nailing the situation. It's like a sole proprietorship, and it's a one-man band, and nobody else matters but him, you know, part of the narcissistic uh, experience. But let's, let's talk about this week, okay? I guess the big thing, we, we, we need to react to the Mueller report. Ooh. Right. So are you happy with that? <laughs> no, not even in the least bit. And how someone could go take almost 400 pages, we know now, just 300, today. 300. It came out today that it's almost 400 pages. Okay. Um, that's what Barr put out. And he said that he might be able to give us the report heavily redacted um, in mid-April. And he's available to sit in front of the, um, the um, what you call it, on May 1st and 2nd. Those are his only dates. The House Committee. Yeah, the House Committee. Thank you. Um, this is the thing. He took a 400, almost 400-page 400 report, and in 48 hours, he wrote a four-page report out of it. And we're supposed to just accept it. And even in his report, the whole thing is that he did not say that he had been completely exonerated. Just the opposite. Yet, you know, minutes later, after he's, you know, made this four-page um, available, uh, Really more like an opinion piece, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. Well, let's <laughs> unpack that a little bit. Right. You know, you got, you got, first, you got the report itself, what Mueller did. And, and Mueller is not my hero. I want to be clear about that. I, don't, I think he did the country a huge disservice. Um, the report itself, I like your thought about that. And I like your thought about uh, the bar, you know, the bar letter. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, you know, we, we should also talk about the reactions of Democrats and Republicans to what has happened. Well, let me just hit just briefly on the reactions, because let's go back in time. I like to do that sometimes. Go back That's what we do here yeah. at Trump Week. Let's, let's go back in time to a time where there was a special prosecutor named Ken Starr who was investigating a certain president by the name of Bill Clinton. 
Now, in truth, would the Republicans have been happy at that time if Ken Starr would have produced his report, it would have gone to Janet Reno, and Janet Reno wrote a four-page summary and saying, all is fine, there's no prosecution, there's no need for any further warrant of impeach talk of impeachment. Um, what would the reaction from the Republicans been at that time? Okay, so let's have the Republicans put themselves in our shoes, the Democrats' shoes, and say, oh, is this hypocrisy or is it not? Complete politicization. Yes. What it is. It's the height so, of hypocrisy. So I, you know, I, I really wonder what Ken Starr was, uh, not Ken Starr, Bob Miller was thinking <laughs> Sorry. of. I, hey. You know, because, you know, he spends uh, how long and how, forget about the money. The money goes with, the, you know, that's, right. that's part of it. Um, all this time, and we get all these, you know, indictments and prosecutions and jail terms, but, but nothing happened vis-a-vis uh, -vis Donald Trump. I mean, really, we have so much information um, about what he did wrong and about all the wrong things that are happening just one inch away from him. And what? Nothing? No collusion? No obstruction? Give me a break. And, and I think maybe there is evidence of collusion and, and, and obstruction, except that it's in the report. Um, and, you know, it, it has to be reviewed. But the, what the Republicans are saying, there's a whole bunch of Republicans now that are speaking on TV saying, well, I guess it's over. And there's complete exoneration. We haven't seen the damn report. How about it, guys? You know, uh, and they're standing in the way of showing us the report. Yeah, I don't like to use sports analogies, but it's kind of like that last call out of the end of a football game, and it's a, a questionable call. But the coach says, get out on the field and pretend like the game's over. Okay. They have done that exactly. Yeah. And it is the right. victory dance and keep dancing and keep, keep claiming the victories and, you know, do not, do not cave in on that. Just yeah. pretend the game is over. Well, it's not over. Yeah. I'm, I'm not happy with Mueller. Mueller should have anticipated this. I agree. He should have anticipated his report would not be released. It would be, you know, misinterpreted, intentionally misinterpreted. There would be lies from the Republican camp about it. Uh, couldn't he do better? He has done a huge disservice. He has effectively helped Trump. I he? agree. Well, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to put this in neutral. You know, I don't know what he said. We don't know what he said. Maybe his, his comments and his reports are as damning as they, we, we suspected they would be. You we know, just don't know to what to... degree, you know, a, Attorney General Barr has, you know, basically massaged the, uh, the sentences and massaged the pages, the 300 over 300 pages. We would just it don't have know. been wrong for him after the... Uh, uh, Barr wrote the report, a uh, letter, for um, Mueller to say, you know, that's not exactly, not exactly what I meant to say. not exactly what I said. Yeah. And he's taking liberties. And so I just, you guys, you, you, you shouldn't make any decisions about this until you read the thing. Right. He didn't say that. No. And, and the silence is deafening from him, as it has it been. Is. I agree. He's not a hero in my mind. He's <clears throat> created a situation where it went the wrong way. Well, it even and now, looks now, like now Trump is talking about the people who started the investigation are traitors and should be going. prosecuted for treason. Are you kidding me? They um, interviewed Comey, and Comey even mm -hmm. said, listen, you know, and he made this great analogy. He said, if, if when Obama was president, when he was running for president, if the Saudis came in and said, we want to help you win, and he said, oh, okay, great, and he didn't do anything about it and didn't report it, and then as they went along, continued to help, would it not be completely um, expected to have some kind of investigation into that? What would the Republicans have said then? They would have been clamoring. We politicized this thing from the beginning. Right? And so that's what has been happening, so that it's like Republicans against Democrats, when in reality we should be Americans looking at the fact that our president has. He's the one who's done the treasonous things, in my mind. And he's such a projectionist. And everything he says is projection. Mm. I'm thinking, oh, man, those fingers are pointed right straight back at himself on this well, calling well, them that's treason. That's not the way the country sees it. No. Right now, you know, Mueller has left this big vacuum, and, and um, Trump is, is, is marching right through it. And, um, you know, I, I make a prediction. We're not going to see that report, just like yeah. uh, we didn't see the tax returns. Right. Just like so many things have been kept secret from us. And the press, you know, he hasn't had a press. So he, he speaks only to his supporters, um, you know, in faraway states as part of his campaign. But, what, you know, what we have here is, um, is a shrinking down of the information that is available to the press and thus to the public. 
Mm -hmm. You guys feel we're going to see that report? April no. Schmaprel. I don't. No. You think we're going to see it? I do. No. I think you just can't. You can't hide that report. And if if they do, then of course Bob Mueller will be subpoenaed, and he will testify to what the contents of the report is coming from the lips of. Special prosecutor. I Mueller. sure hope so. Come on, you guys. You, you, this this is not going to be put under a rug, and reality is going to be reality. It may take longer than suspected. Uh, the subpoenas may get caught up in the court system, but it's going to happen. Well, I think it'll be so redacted that it won't do us any good anyway. That's my think. I think they're going to take out anything that so has anything. It's going to be redaction that after redaction after redaction. After redaction. Yeah. We won't or omission anything. because of privilege or. Um, uh, Grand juries and that's Amy uh, uh, Klobuchar. Klobuchar was on television last night in C-SPAN, and she said, "You know what's what's the problem? Um, grand jury testimony has been re revealed to the public before mm -hmm. and to Congress. What's the problem? You know what are mm -hmm. they coming up with? Anything in a storm? And indeed, this right. goes um, this goes to our our continuing discussion of distraction." And if we're going to look at this week, we have to look at this week as a, as a week in which uh, Trump, you know, charged the, the guys who started the investigation with, with treason. But then he moved on to other things. Journalists. Yeah, right. Yeah. Journalists or treason, right? That's, that doesn't sound like the First Amendment to me. But anyway, but he's done a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of news this week. And, and the idea is let's get this behind us. Let's yeah. claim victory and get on to other things. We got to distract the people. We got to fool all the people all the time, Huey Long, right? Yeah. Um, so what kind of distractions have we seen? Well, his, his campaign stop, um, you know, basically pontificating the fact that he's, he's innocent, always was innocent, and anyone who claimed otherwise is treasonous. Um, you know, I really got a, an earful when, I was, when he was talking about the journalist, and all of a sudden the crowd broke out into a a choir of lock them up, lock them up. Now, oh my God, you know, am it's I sad. looking at something in 1938 in, in Italy with Mussolini at the podium? I mean, what, what are these times? And you're hearing people lock up the journalists, lock up, you know, I mean, this is crazy. Same thing that he did with Hillary, you know? But to do that, is it, that's like saying lock up the Constitution. He's running it not only as a sole proprietorship, but out of his. His, 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 his pocket. The only thing I was missing from that, your brother's statement, was the fact that he has circumvented Congress on this national emergency. Um, that is a sole proprietorship act. And I, I'm completely dismayed and dumbfounded that Congress has allowed this to happen. They right. did not override his veto. And, and he's taking money from the military, and the military says, well, he's a commander in chief, so we got to do it. You know, the loyalty is with him. And, and it's getting more and more problematic as to his ability to pull these things off, outrageous things, and everybody goes along, and the Republicans, their names will go down in history, every one of them, yeah. for undermining the Constitution I and our democracy. You. It's happening right in front of our eyes. Very Is serious. it happening to a point where it's so often that it's just they're, everyone's immune to it? Right. And it just passes their, their field of vision and, and allowed, allows it to, be, to occur? Yes. I think we're getting used to a new normal thing. Right. Some of the things uh, that he's doing today, if he had done that in, uh, say, in January of 2017, right after Obama, who was, you know, in a relative sense, he was a wonderful gentleman, um, that would have been outrageous in January 2017. Mm -hmm. But now, little by little, outrage becomes the new normal. And we get, we get fatigued over outrage. You've been desensitized to desensitized all the Desensitized over outrage. Right. So what's on your list? Well, did anyone have any reaction to calling um, Adam Schiff out and basically demanding that he resign? Did, it, would that, uh, did that surprise anybody? Certainly didn't surprise me. Well, he wants surprise. Schiff out of there. Schiff is effective. Schiff, Schiff, I get Schiff emails every day, including right. today, where he said, don't worry, I'm not going to be intimidated. Well, uh, and I, no. I don't want him to be intimidated. He's a hero. He, he said something I think all Americans, I don't care what side you're on, needs to pay attention to, and that is, he said, but I do not think the conduct, criminal or not, is okay. And the day America thinks it's okay is the day we've lost our way. 
coming. I like the way before that he had said, uh, you might think it's okay. That He went through this whole list of, you may think it's okay. And then he talks about how Russia offered you know, dirt on their opponent. You think that's okay that the president's son said he'd love it um, and didn't call the FBI or anyone else to report it. Then you might think it's okay that that son took that meeting. You might think it's okay that Manafort, with lots of experience with campaigns, took that meeting. You might be, uh, think it's okay that the son-in-law took that meeting and then that they lied about the meeting. And you might say, well, that's just what you need to win. You might think it's okay, but I don't. I think it's unethical, immoral, unpatriotic, and yes, I think it's corrupt. Yeah. I love that quote yeah. when he said well, that. I agree with him absolutely. We've got to have a voice like that. We must have him speak. <laughs> How can and, anyone think it's okay? And to try to squash him is really to, you know, admit the wrongdoing in a right? sense. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, okay, that gets my, my nerves uh, going. Uh, let's take a short <laughs> break so I can recover. And we'll come back and we'll go to the rest of these points. All in one week. All in one week. It's like we're falling off the, you know, the, falling off the, the pedestal of democracy every week. Further, further. further we'll be further. right back. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests, I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're, we're not feeling any better. Um, so, How are your nerves? <laughs> not good. Minor shot on this deal. <laughs> so, okay. So, you know, meanwhile, I mean, it's like every day, all the articles about him in every paper, and they're all bad news for us. I mean, the, the country in general. Uh, and he's running and he's raising money and there are people supporting his craziness. So what's happened in terms of like um, the social safety net? I worry about that so much because I, it's clear, you know, if you connect the dots, and we should on this show connect the dots, well, what he's about is taking away the social safety net. All you guys on your own, and you can die on the street with me, it's okay. What's happening here? Right. So how has he advanced that, and what, how does that affect the conversation? You know, it's, it's a shattering distraction for one thing. And it was, you know, he came out with it the day after that um, Barr came out with his letter. It's like, we're done. We can move on. Let's look over here now. I'm going to gut the ACA. I'm going to ask the courts, actually, to gut the ACA. And I'm going to gut, I'm going to gut Medicaid, Medicare, and all these other programs that are our social programs. I'll lose my health insurance if he succeeds in this. Well, it's millions of people me. lose their health insurance. And, and I was going to say, and 200 probably million other people is what they're saying. And, uh, not, to say, not to say that uh, already millions of people have lost their health insurance because he's been right. systematically dumping on yeah. Obamacare. If right. he hadn't done that, we would have many more people insured in this country, many more people healthy. Um, to say nothing about the, you know, the effect on national morale. You don't know when you're going to be covered or not covered. Right. You don't know what they're going to do. Um, and repeal it without a plan? My God, that's hideous. That's what it so, really gets me. Okay, so let's go to the sole proprietorship uh, Model, concept. Model, yeah, right. Um, he's clearly acting as a sole proprietorship because many, many voters that are Republican rely on their insurance. And a lot of it is Obamacare insurance or Medicare insurance. And so I think... Republicans in Congress are going, what are you doing? What, is this a strategy that you haven't told us about? Because it's making no sense. So our sole proprietor, uh, proprietor uh, president 
is making some really crazy statements about gutting completely the insurance and Medicare. Well, I think behind, what was behind that for him is he saw the Democrats win on health care this last time. That was their big thing, and that's what they really won on. So he's like, well, I want that now. So I'm going to take it, and he says that the Republicans are going to be the party of uh, health, and health insurance. Health care, right? Health care and health insurance. Okay, guess what? What is it? He doesn't have we one. We don't know. We okay. never knew. So how can you <laughs> give confidence to the country that I'm going to gut something that you, you, you and your family need each and every day, mm -hmm. yet I don't have anything in the wings to tell you what my plan is? Well, but we're going to give you the best one ever. <clears throat> what he said. Hey, come on, you guys. Like, then, then, there's talk about, then there's talk about a, a, a tax increase on the middle right. class next year. Right. It was only like, what, a year ago? That we had this phantasmagoric reduction of taxes without any plan, and uh, uh, you know, and it was only temporary. Yeah. And what they did was they conned us; they they deceived us into believing in that. Uh, and now they're going to zip up the taxes again. You go to any watering hole, and you sit at the bar long enough, and it's tax season right now. April fifteenth, I believe, is the mm, deadline. That's right. This is the end of March. Right now, conversations are taking place. Going. I didn't get nearly as much of my refund fund as I thought I was going to. It was a scam, and that those those words and those those you know those comments are taking place right now across yeah. America. I hope so the other the other the yeah. other scam is is uh, you know the tariffs. <clears throat> you know these people in the Midwest, you know who have who have their you know produce sitting in silos that can't can't sell it. Um, they're really stuck. And I remember um, an NPR discussion of this sometime in the fall, last fall, where the farmer said, well, we know he must have some, he must have some method about this, so we'll support him, we'll continue to support him and hope that he can break China's back on this and they'll come around. Well, they haven't come around. No. And, and we haven't broken China's back. Instead, we broke the back of the farmers. The farmers. And we're still breaking the back yeah. of the farmers. are going out of business. Um, and so, you know, how long is this going to last before they say, enough, you guys, you know, you're conning me. Why, why are you ruining my business this way? It's not for good reason. I mean, it, this, you, you can't fool all the people all the time. Louis, Louis Long, demagogue in Louisiana, right, in the right. 30s. Um, we, we gotta, people have got to figure out that these promises aren't being kept. They've got to figure out that the real false news is Trump. Um, I hope they do. Well, it wouldn't be but the first he's time. trying to continue to fool them. It wouldn't be the first time uh, voters voted against their own economic interests in uh, lieu of social interests. I can think of Ronald Reagan and his many, many loyal followers that voted for him, although in the end, the economy was hurtful to them, but they voted for him anyway. Mm -hmm. So this isn't the first time we're going to see this, and it probably won't be the last. Well, <laughs> the problem is he's going to, he is attacking the Democrats like Adam Schiff and, and others. And um, attacking anybody who, um, you know, who we can, who's adverse to him. And, and that is very troubling because it's all leading up to the election. And people, you know, are getting fooled. They're still fooled. They're still fooled. I don't know, I don't have a confident feeling about the ability of the Democrats to come together and offer a good candidate. And that candidate would, you know, would, would, would pull it off. Because Trump is going to be attacking them like crazy every day. Well, we had these concerns before the midterm elections. And ultimately, 40 seats uh, went to the Democratic side. Um, I still have faith that the voter will look at the pros and cons of this administration, and sanity will prevail. I worry about the um, trustworthiness of our voting. So I think he might just cheat. I mean, he cheats at everything, so why wouldn't he cheat at this? It makes no sense that he wouldn't cheat to win. So how would he do it, and how would we protect ourselves from it? That's what we're That's the me. role of the media. Right? There you the go. The media is under attack as hey, never before. Never before, He's yeah. really letting go of the media now because he knows they stand between him and re-election. And if, right. they, if they are able to tell the truth, then... All his lies uh, that'll hurt him. So he wants to you know, de decredibilize them in every way. At the same time, he's building Fox News as he's never had before, right. as as his official state organ. 
You know, all these things sound like uh, Germany in the 30s, honestly. Ah, they do. And you know, before the Barr letter was, um, was released, suddenly there was a shift in all of the Trump family, all of, and Trump himself, coming out with, oh, I don't care if they show the whole thing. Suddenly, they didn't mind if the report came out. And I thought, that's an awfully odd shift right now. <laughs> what, what are they? And I thought, they must know. They already know what's in it. So Barr or Whitaker or one of them has already given them what's in it anyway, which is why they're suddenly changing their tune. And I noticed it about a week before, and then all of a sudden, sure, there it is. Well, they said they were going to look at it before to make sure there was nothing, you know, that was confidential, uh, privileged information between the president. They said they were going to look at it. He never answered the question. No, he did not. It, quite remarkable. So he, you know, just as my brother said, you, yes. he, he's not candid. He's not honest. He's not telling us anything. He's not, and he's forcing, the, he's trying hard to force the press not to tell us anything. So what do you think about the fact that Mueller didn't call him in? Did not subpoena him? I don't understand that. Never, I don't I understand said, that Mueller's either. Mueller's not my hero. Uh, I didn't, I, I didn't know, understand this, that at all. All this stuff for 22 months, and it's a, what I call a nothing burger, really. I mean, he could, he could, have, he could have at least um, you know, made a statement that, that there was some kind of you shenanigans know, here, but he didn't do I don't that. I know why you guys are saying he, he nothing burger. on the main, the main question. I don't know why you're saying nothing burger. We, we could not conclude one way or the other about obstruction of justice. That is a huge... Richard Nixon went down for obstruction of justice. What do you um, mean we could not conclude? Right, so that well, means why we still have to... Conclude? So the, because yeah. the report needs to be re read and, by and reviewed. By, by the Attorney General who works for Trump? No, this is what, this is what the Oversight Committee is for. This is what well, the House of Representatives okay. is for. I think uh, Mueller was hoping that it would go to Congress right away. I think he didn't really... I think he's... Well, we know that he's friends with Barr. We know they're friends because Barr talked about the fact that they have barbecues together. Their families are friends even. And so I wonder if he put more faith in Barr than maybe he should have because they know each other. I don't know, because that doesn't make sense to me that he wouldn't put things more, put forward a little bit more forcefully. how powerful the president is, any president. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the other thing is that um, um, we, we have the, the Southern District, or rather the, the Manhattan, Manhattan. Uh, and the uh, prosecuting attorney. It's not a federal jurisdiction. And apparently some of the information in the report has gone. Where, where Mueller did not want to address it, he sent it to other jurisdictions, state jurisdictions, which are not subject to the president's pardon authority. So there may be a light at the end of the tunnel. That's the question. That's an ongoing question for us here at Trump Week. Right. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Um, I mean, you guys may be more optimistic than I am. Um, but I it's, am. It's so He's more optimistic than I You've am. You've got so to put faith know. in our system, and I'm, I'm not hearing that from you guys. Sorry. This is, this is <laughs> right now, I don't. The biggest cause... attack the system has ever had. In this I understand yeah. it's been under attack, but the system will prevail. If this report is going to see late light of day, and if you do not believe that, then you've got to have more faith. Right. Well, and I the Republicans mean... want you to have this discouragement. They want you to move on. Let's not do no, that. No, I'm not moving on. I just don't have faith in the fact that we will really get an unredacted report. That well, there will be redactions. Anyway. Of course, they will. Well, be. some yes is one thing, but I think when it's overredacted and I and guarantee things are there will be 27 distractions between now and then and and April when that deadline, or whatever, whatever yeah. how much of a deadline it is, the middle of April. Is I would not take a bet against that. <laughs> All right. So, what's going to happen next week? Any predictions? Uh, We're going to talk about the education budget and everything that's happening next week. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Betsy DeVos came out with. First, she's going to gut all of the money from Special Olympics, and then Trump comes out and says, "Oh no, no! I've told my people, my people, I've told my people that we are not going to take the money from." Yeah. The first, Special he told Olympics. them this, then he told them that. So. Yeah. What Next week, they're going to find Betsy DeVos underneath the bus that he threw her under. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Would that mean she can't wreck any more education stuff? That'd be okay Oh, that's sad. What, <laughs> else? what else is going to come up next week? Give me some wild predictions. We're going to know more about the report. That's a wild prediction. I hope so. I think I'm going to hear more about what the Democrats are doing in, in the yeah. House. Yeah, yeah, I hope. I think it's going to be more attacks on Democrats. Right? Yeah. Okay. I think he's going to up the, the ante for his attacks. I mean... It wasn't, but 
like hours after he had put out the tweet that um, that Schiff should resign, when the Republicans in that off in that um, committee meeting, a public meeting no less, call for his resignation, saying that he can't be trusted anymore. Yeah. Well, you wonder when they're going to crack, but they really haven't cracked yet. You guys, but government and politics is rough and tumble business, and it's high time for the Democrats to realize. That it is a rough and tumble business. And when they go low, you don't always necessarily go high. Mm. You've got to get in there and fight. And I, agree. and I see Adam Schiff, one of those people, saying, I'm not going high. I'm sticking out for the, the ethics and morals of our democracy, and I'm yeah. sticking to it. I I'm with know, him. I cried when I heard you, him say you that. You remember uh, <laughs> Alex did. de Tocqueville? He was a philosopher in the 18th century. And so he said what he said, he put this word on He says, remember that democracy is tumultuous. But you know what? He never contemplated this. This is a really small deal. Next week, then, is it a date, you guys? It's a date. Next week, All right. we'll Cynthia see what Sinclair, happens. Tim Apicella, I so enjoyed this discussion. Thank you, Jay. Thanks <laughs> Thank for having you, us. Jay. Aloha. Aloha. Yeah, aloha.